Asia. We've gone on a hiatus. The, uh, the year 2020 has been a little bit difficult for us to get together in the studios and to actually record this uh, program. But alhamdulillah, now we're able to actually gather together uh, through this amazing setup of technology. Alhamdulillah. Ya Aisha is a program where we are taking a look at all of the ahadith where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has mentioned the words Ya Aisha, which is O Aisha. And in this, we are uh, thinking of uh, bringing to light all of the ways the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has spoken to his wife and all the lessons that that would have taken uh, or, or he would have given uh, in, in that kind of uh, speech. Sheikh Abdul Hamid is a senior lecturer at Imam Abdul Islam Institute of Toronto. He's also um, wrote his uh, master's uh, uh, thesis I, I, on, on the actual on this these hadith themselves. And uh, let me welcome Sheikh Abdul Hamid. Sheikh Abdul Hamid, welcome back. Assalamu alaikum wa It's my pleasure to be here. May Allah bless you, Sheikh Abdul Hamid. It's been a long time, and uh, I am uh, certain uh, you miss uh, IIT. I sure do. I sure do. Subhanallah. Barakallah. May Allah bless you. How have you been spending some time on during this pandemic, Sheikh? Well, Alhamdulillah, um, I've been fairly busy with uh, with classes and programs. Uh, every week, I have at least uh, four programs, mm -hmm. a few IIT and, um, and and others with other groups. So, Alhamdulillah, that has kept me fairly busy, and so I haven't really uh, missed going out too much per se. Yeah, I, I, I have enjoyed being able to uh, being at home and doing the programs as opposed to having to run out and go to a masjid. Yeah. But nevertheless, uh, we still miss going to the masjid and being with the brothers and the sisters there and doing salah and, and meeting and all that. You're keeping healthy, your family and everybody? Alhamdulillah, everybody is fine so far, uh, doing well. Um, and we pray that Allah will continue to protect us and protect all, all our brothers and sisters. Alhamdulillah. The last hadith we talked about, Sheikh Abdul Hamid, before we went on this break, which was actually really cool because the last hadith we did, it was right, almost right before Ramadan. But it was the hadith about the prayer of nighttime during the month of Ramadan. Okay. Now, what we want to do is we want to get into the next hadith itself. And I'm going to do the same thing that we did before, which is basically read the hadith itself. And then ask you a couple of questions about, uh, first of all, we'll go we'll read the hadith. We'll talk about the translation and we'll talk about all the benefits that we would like to take from the hadith itself. We'll keep it as short as possible because we do want people to uh, be introduced to this hadith. Uh, and then research more of it as they go. So the hadith, the hadith here, which is the, I think you call it matlab al fil ibadah And this hadith here uh, is narrated on Aisha radiallahu anha qalat kana rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam iza salla qama hatta tafattara uh, rijlah qalat Aisha ya rasulullah ya rasulullah atasna'u hadha wa qad ghufira laka ma taqaddama min dhambika wa ma taakhar wa qala ya Aisha this hadith has been narrated. Uh, I guess the narration here is from Muslim. So take us through the translation, Sheikh. Uh, Aisha radiallahu anha narrated that the Prophet salam used to pray. And by praying here, she meant the Hajjud prayers, not the Fart prayers, the Tahajjud prayers, because that's when he was alone and he had the time. Uh, everybody was sleeping, so he, he had... Uh, personal time to dedicate to his worship uh, of his creator and his connection with his creator. So he used to pray and he used to stand so long in prayers that his feet would swell. And so she said to him, O Messenger of Allah, you do this while Allah has forgiven for you all your sins, past and future. And he replied to her saying, should I then not be a thankful slave? Um, One of the things we learn from this hadith is that we are encouraged to actually inquire about things that that seem out of place to us, right? Yes. Uh, here is Aisha radiallahu anha. She sees the Prophet alayhi salam, her husband, performing tahajjud prayers. Um, and he's standing up uh, for such a long time that his feet would swell. Um, she did not assume to herself, okay, he's the messenger of Allah. He could do whatever he wants to do. But she asked him about it. She said, look, O Messenger of Allah, you do this like you pray so long that your feet would swell when Allah has already forgiven for you all your sins. Like, what's the point? Why are you praying so long? You, your sins have already been forgiven. Um, so we are encouraged as Muslims to ask questions and to inquire about things that, that uh, don't sit well with us per se. 
And the Prophet ﷺ responded to her by saying, in that case, should I not be a thankful servant? You know, meaning that if, as you say, Allah has already forgiven for me all my sins, and that is true, of course, uh, that is actually mentioned in the Quran, that Allah has forgiven for the Prophet ﷺ his sins past and future. Uh, he said to her, well, okay, in that case, should I then not be thankful for about this and for this? Another important lessons the scholars have mentioned about this hadith is that when Aisha radiallahu anha asked the Prophet salam, why does he do this while, when Allah has forgiven for him all his sins already, past and future, she's coming from the perspective that, you know, you pray if you want forgiveness, right? You turn to Allah when you want forgiveness. And, and, and that's the perspective she's coming from, right? Because her statement, Allah has already forgiven for you all your sins, past and future, Im implies that. That, look, you don't need the forgiveness. Why do you pray so much? From this, we can understand that she she understood that praying to Allah, especially in Nafil, is more about forgiveness. But the answer of the Prophet, salam, subhanAllah, directed her to another reason why we do good deeds. And that is, we do good deeds, yes, because often we want forgiveness of Allah. That is certainly there. But in addition to that, especially the voluntary ones, we also do voluntary good deeds in an expression of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his blessings upon us. So he's not just praying for forgiveness because he was already forgiven. But now he's praying and praying a lot till his feet would swell because he wants to give gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a, a, an important uh, aspect of, of, of our lives as Muslims that we need to remember that doing voluntary deeds is not just about the uh, it's not just about the thawab or the reward in order to outweigh the bad deeds, right? It's not about forgiveness only. It's about that, of course, but it is also about expressing our gratitude and gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his blessings. So that itself is a recognition of the blessings, the tremendous blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's, that's an amazing uh, lesson that the Prophet ﷺ taught her and taught all of us, of course. Mm -hmm. And it's actually a really beautiful thing, Sheikh, because it, I guess really uh, it exemplifies, first of all, a couple of things that I actually want to mention about the hadith, which is really cool to me. The first one is that nobody else except for a wife of the Prophet would be able to see this. Oh, you see what I'm saying? Because really, yeah. <laughs> right? If it's like even if his companions would see him praying at nighttime or so on and so forth, those are his companions, and the companions already think a certain way of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in terms of his piety and in terms of like no one really sees the truth, the true you or true me, except for our wives and our spouses, right? Like 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 our level of piety. So the fact that his wife would be the one. To see this happening at nighttime, I mean, he's he's, he's not. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 it's a really beautiful thing. First of all, it's, it's the one that that says it. The second thing is, um, which is, I guess, like even even beyond uh, amazing is, uh, which is the fact that, and you've mentioned this, which is, many of us always see uh, the relationship between Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala as He orders and we oblige. It's not another type of a relationship. It's not. It's not a. It's not a more of like a, I'm also given uh, to to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala because it's something that I'm just thankful for 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 given what I, what I've been given. And that's why the hadith is so is so important, and that's why it's such a beautiful hadith mm -hmm. because it highlights that aspect of our worship of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. That it's not just about um, because Allah ordered. I have to oblige. I'm the creation. Uh, you know, I, I want to forgive them for my sins, but it's also about an expression of gratefulness and gratitude to Allah for His tremendous blessings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a beautiful hadith. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. May, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, inshallah. Uh, I do want to uh, end here, inshallah, so I can come back the next time, bi ta'ala. And I want to ask all of you, inshallah, to join us once again on another episode of Ya Aisha with Sheikh Abdul Hamid. Barakallahu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.